Hi, Pete here from Club Engineer. In the previous talk throughs, we modified our robot, adding an extra sensor. We also wrote our two sensor line following program. Now it's time to get that program to decide which way to turn when it detects a green hint. So let's get started. We'll open our two sensor line following program and have a look at the place in the code where the decision whether to turn left or right has to be made. You recall that the program is designed so that if sensor 1 sees white and sensor 4 sees white, it executes this line up here, running both motors flat out forward. If 1 sees white and 4 sees dark, it turns the robot by running motor A forward and C backwards. Likewise, if 1 sees dark and 4 sees light, it turns the robot by running motor C forward and A backwards. Finally, if both 1 and 4 see dark, we've programmed it to stop the motors and then stop the program. You'll recall that we've set the light thresholds so that black and green are detected as pretty much the same thing. So if the robot's sensors are over black and green, it will think that they're both black and it will stop the motors. Let's have a look at how that appears when the robot's running. The robot's approaching the green. It sees green and black, or it thinks it's black and black, and it stops. Now we can see that the left-hand sensor is actually over the green and the right-hand sensor is over the black. So if we were to take a reading from both sensors and compare them, we'd be fairly safe turning towards the sensor with the lower value. Let's have a look at that on the next turn hint. The robot approaches the turn hint and then it stops dead when both sensors are detecting a darker colour. In this case, the left-hand sensor is over the green and the right-hand sensor is over the black. Once again, we can safely turn towards the lower of the two readings. The robot approaches the right-hand turn hint this time and stops. And in this case, we can see that the right-hand sensor is over the green and the left-hand sensor is over black. This sounds like it's going to be a fairly reliable algorithm. So let's get started implementing it. In our code, we're going to convert the blocks that stop the robot into a my block. So I select them both by holding down the shift key and clicking on the two blocks. I then go to the edit menu and select make a new my block. I want to give the my block a good name, so I'm going to enter the name property here. I'm going to call it detect green. D E T E C T green. G R E E N. Capital D, capital G with no spaces. I'll move the my block and get it, things tidied up a bit. And there we have it. Now if I double click on this my block, it will take us into the code. Again, I'm going to move things around a bit just to tidy up the my block. Now the next step is to add the code that will compare the values from the two light sensors. So we need two light sensor blocks. Now you notice I took the light sensor block from the complete palette under sensors. This one here. Previously we've been using either the light sensor under the weight block or the light sensor connected to a switch block. We don't want to use either of those in this case. This, the block we're choosing is slightly different in that it will take the, a value reading from the light sensor and it will pass it directly down a data wire to the next stage in the program. It won't cause the program to wait at all. Let's set the first block to read the light sensor on port 1 and the second block to read the light sensor on port 4. Now we need a mathematical compare block to determine which is the lesser of the two. We also need a switch block so we can make use of that decision. 
we're going to pass the value from light sensor 4 into port A of the compare block. We're going to pass the value of light sensor 1 into port B of the compare block. We're going to change the switch block. So instead of switching based on a sensor, it switches based on a value. We're going to take the value out of the compare block and pass it into the switch block. Now, looking at our robot, we can see that sensor 4 is the left hand sensor. So if sensor 4 is the lower of the two readings, we want the robot to turn left. So from this, if sensor 4 is less than sensor 1, we want the robot to turn left. So we're going to put the code to execute the left hand turn here. But before we do, we're going to add some debugging code in the form of a sound block. I'm going to drop a single sound block there and make it say the word left. So I click on the click on the file drop down combo, type the letter L and then select left. So if sensor 4 is not less than sensor 1 or greater than we want it to we want the robot to turn right. So we'll pop a sound block down here and we'll make this one say right. Good. Now we can test this and see how our robot behaves. The robot's approaching the line and it stops. I didn't quite catch that. You hear it? It said left. That's good. So this algorithm is working. Let's try it one more time. Approaching the green. Ah, it said right. That's interesting. It said right. Not working. Well, that was uh, one out of two failed. We'll try it again. Left, okay. So one out of three failed. That's interesting. Let's try it on uh, the other uh, hint, should I say. Left. Alright, so one out of four failed. So we're not totally reliable. Sounds like we need to do a little bit of fine tuning. Let's have a close look at where it failed one more time. Okay, we'll have a close look at that. Okay, now if you study that very carefully, you can see that the right hand sensor is very slightly over the white. So the robot has successfully detected black and black and stopped executing our detect green code. However, the right hand sensor isn't completely over the black line. So it might be reading a slightly higher value than we think it should be. Perhaps the thing to try now is to get the robot to creep forward just a touch before it takes the measurements that make the decision. So what we'll do is go to the uh, common tab on the complete palette. We'll add a move block down. We'll set it to control motors A and C, which of course are our motors. We'll set it at a fairly low power, say 30, and we'll set it at a f to just creep the robot forward very slightly. Let's say uh, 30 degrees. So what's going to happen now when the two sensors detect black, it's going to enter this my block, it's going to stop the motors, then it's going to creep the robot forward very slightly to try and over this, overcome this problem of misreading before it takes the readings on ports 1 and 4. Let's try that one more time and see if that works towards solving the problem. Ah, that was better. That worked. Uh, that worked. That's uh, 2 out of 2. Ah, okay, that that, uh, that didn't work. So we're still running at uh, a success rate of two out of three. Hmm, wonder what else could be wrong. 
When in doubt, calibrate. So let's have a look at our calibration spreadsheet one more time. Okay, do you see what's going on between sensors 1 and 4 under green? If both sensors are on green, sensor 4 is going to be reading very slightly higher than sensor 1. So, it's possible that sensor 4, when it's on black, is reading higher than we think it is. So what if we make a small correction before we do the compare? Let's have a shot at calculating that. I'm going to enter the word correction here. I'm going to make it bold with control, uh, control B. And the uh, correction is going to be um, this value minus this value. So I'm going to start by typing the equals character, telling the spreadsheet tool to, tool to expect a formula. I'm going to come up and select cell B4, type the minus character, and then come up and select cell B2, then hit enter. So we have a correction of 3. So we have to add 3 to sensor 1 before we do the compare. Let's have a shot at doing that. We have to add 3 to sensor 1 before we do the compare. So to do that, we're going to add a math block in here. I'm going to break the data wire between 1 and the compare. I'm going to pass the value from the intensity of 1 into the math block. I'm going to set the value of B on the math block to 3, then take the value out of the math block, plug it into the compare block, and there we are. Now we're going to add the correction to the light sensor value coming from port 1 before we do the compare. So let's test that, shall we? Worked once, worked twice, worked three times, that's better, worked four times, Let's try it on the other, Hint. five, six, seven, very good. Looks like we've now got the robot very reliably detecting which way it has to turn. Now you have a shot at implementing the code that makes the decision whether to turn left or right. And when you're done, we'll come back one final time on turn on green and put the pieces together so your robot is able to complete all the tiles with the hints. Good luck detecting left or right. The material we're covering in these talkthroughs is hard, and sometimes, in spite of your best effort, you may find that you're stuck. Often, it only takes a small amount of face-to-face -face help to get you back on track. If you think you'd benefit from face-to-face -face help, then open your web browser and type clubengineer.org help. You'll see a list of times and places where face-to-face -face help is available. At these sessions, you'll get all the help you need to get back on track. You may also meet like-minded young engineers such as yourself for collaborating on projects down the track. Face-to-face -face sessions are run over the school holidays and after school during term time. They're available for all ages from years five to year 12. We also run face-to-face -face sessions for teachers and mentors. We'd love to meet you at one of these sessions and learn what you have been building.